Hello, good morning. I am Dr. Mariam Sardar, Associate Professor in the Department of Biosciences, Jamia Mili Islamia, New Delhi. Today I am going to teach you about the enzyme immobilization. In today's lecture, we'll, we will study what is enzyme immobilization, merits and demerits of immobilization, methods of immobilization, the biochemical properties of immobilized enzymes and the applications of immobilized enzymes are de will be discussed in detail. The term immobilized enzymes refer to enzymes physically confined or localized in a certain defined region of a space with retention of their catalytic activities and which can be used repeatedly and continuously. Immobilized enzymes are also sometimes referred to as sound, insolubilized support or matrix linked enzymes. The major components of an immobilized enzyme system are the enzyme, the matrix and the mode of attachment of the enzyme to the matrix. The term solid support, carrier and matrix are used synonymously. The free enzyme lost their activity while in immobilized enzyme can be used repeatedly. Now we will talk about the advantages of immobilization. The major advantage is the stability of an enzyme generally increases after immobilization. Second major consideration is the reusability. This makes the system more economical and can be used in industries. Immobilized enzymes have some disadvantages also like there is loss of catalytic activity in some cases after immobilization. The additional steps or chemicals are required to immobilize the enzymes. That means additional cost of immobilization. In this lecture, we will discuss about the different methods used for the immobilization. The selection of mode of immobilization is very important to prevent the loss of enzyme activity by not changing the chemical nature or reactive groups in the binding site of enzyme. Considerable knowledge for the nature of the active site of the enzyme will be helpful. On the other hand, active site can be protected by the attachment of protective groups later on which can be removed without any loss of enzyme activity. In some cases, this protective function can be fulfilled by a substrate or a competitive inhibitor of the enzyme. Number of important points should be kept in mind while immobilizing an enzyme. The biological activity of the enzyme should be retained, the enzyme should be more stable as compared to soluble counterpart. It should be used repeatedly, the cost of immobilization should not be too high. There are different methods by which we can immobilize the enzyme. Depending upon the usage, we have to select the method. Some are reversible and some are irreversible. The most common procedure of enzyme immobilization are adsorption, covalent coupling, entrapment and cross-linking. Adsorption of enzymes onto insoluble supports is a very old and simple method which has wide application and high capability of enzyme loading to relative to their other immobilization methods. Enzymes can be immobilized by simply mixing the enzymes with a suitable adsorbent under appropriate conditions of pH and ionic strength. After washing off loosely bound and unbound enzyme, the immobilized enzyme is obtained in a directly usable form. Adsorption process is based on Van der Waals forces, ionic and hydrogen bonding as well as hydrophobic interactions which are very weak forces but in large number impart sufficient binding strength. Physical adsorption is the simplest method of immobilization but by altering the reaction conditions like pH, temperature, ionic strength of the medium, the enzyme leaches out of the matrix. Another method is covalent immobilization which involves the formation of covalent bond between the enzyme and the support. 
the functional group present in the enzymes get linked to support matrix as these functional groups are not responsible for the catalytic activity. The binding reaction must be performed under conditions that do not cause loss of enzymatic activity and the active site of enzyme must be unaffected by the reagents used. The chemical reagents used in the for covalent binding methods are amino groups, hydroxyl group, carboxyl group, etc. This slide shows how enzyme is attached to the matrix by a covalent bond. Covalent association of enzymes to support occurs owing to their side chain amino acids like arginine, aspartic acid, histidine and degree of reactivity based on different functional groups like imidazole, indole, phenolic, hydroxyl etc. Peptide modified surfaces when used for enzyme linkage results in higher specific activity and stability with control protein orientation. Any type of matrix organic or inorganic which can form a covalent linkage with the enzyme can be used for covalent bonding. There are various methods like diazotization, formation of peptide bond and cross linking reagents which can be used for linking the enzyme to the matrix. Amidylation reaction, thiol disulfide interchain and alkylation are some of the reactions commonly used to couple an enzyme to the matrix. In covalent immobilization, the enzyme gets stabilized and there is no leakage of the enzyme from the matrix. But the addition of covalent bond might change the conformation of the enzyme and its activity. Entrapment is defined as the restricted movement of enzymes in a porous gel yet keeping them as free molecules in solution. Trapment of enzymes within gels or fibers is a convenient method for use in processes involving low molecular weight substrates and products. However, the difficulty with large molecules have in approaching the catalytic sites of entrapped enzyme precludes the use of entrapped enzymes and with high molecular weight substrates. The entrapment processes may be a purely physical caging or involve covalent binding. Enzymes have been entrapped in natural polymers like agarose and gelatin through thermoresverse polymerization, but in alginate and carrageenone by ionic gelation, a number of synthetic polymers like polyvinyl alcohol hydrogels, polyacrylamide have also been investigated. Entrapment can be carried out in beads or in fibers. Like the physical and covalent methods, entrapment also has some advantages and disadvantages. It is fast, mild conditions are required, but the disadvantage is the leakage of the enzyme and chances of microbial contamination, boat diffusion, limitations. Cross-linking method involves attachment of biocatalysts to each other by bi or multifunctional reagents or ligands. In this way, very high molecular weight typically insoluble aggregates are formed. Cross-linking is relatively simple process. It is not a preferred method of immobilization as it does not use any support matrix. So they are usually gelatinous and are not particularly firm. Since it involves a bond of the covalent kind, biocatalyst immobilized in this way frequently undergoes changes in the conformation with the resultant loss of activity. Recent advancement to cross-linking methods is the formation of CLEC, CLIA or Spherizyme. CLEC is a cross-link enzyme aggregate. It is an immobilized enzyme prepared by a cross-linking of the physical enzyme aggregates with the difunctional cross-linker. They can be used as stereoselective industrial biocatalysts. The more recently developed cross-link enzyme aggregates are produced by simple precipitation of the enzyme from aqueous solution as physical agent aggregates of protein molecules. 
by the addition of salts or water miscible organic solvents or non ionic polymers. These physical aggregates are held together by non covalent bonding without perturbation of their tertiary structure that is without denaturation. In this slide we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of cross linking methods. Here we will talk about the different types of solid supports that are used for immobilizing the enzyme. The matrix which are paramount importance is determining the per performance of the immobilized enzyme. Ideal support properties include physical resistance to compression, hydrophilicity, inertness towards enzyme, ease of derivatization, biocompatibility, resistance to microbial attack and availability at low cost. Wide range of mattresses or supports are available for immobilization. Supports can be classified as inorganic and organic according to, the, to their chemical composition. The organic supports can be subdivided into natural and synthetic polymers. Each has its own advantage and disadvantage. As we have seen that the different kinds of matrices are used in immobilization, some of the examples of natural polymers are highlighted in this slide. Some synthetic polymers are also used as support matrices like DEAE, PEG, PVP, etc. The inorganic materials most commonly used as support for immobilization are glass, silica, ceramics, activated carbons, charcoal, etc. The biochemical properties of the enzymes changes after immobilization because the environment of the immobilized enzyme is very different from that of the free enzyme in solution. Generally there is a decrease in the rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions. The matrix restricts the diffusion of the substrate towards the enzyme. The performance of the immobilized enzyme can be improved further by studying the structural changes of the immobilized enzyme. The properties of the, of the matrix influence the catalytic activities of the enzyme. The study of the structure of the protein after immobilization is very helpful in improving the performance of the enzyme. So far we have learnt about the enzyme immobilization and different methods for enzyme immobilization. Let us now look at the different applications of the immobilized enzyme. Currently immobilized enzymes found application in industry, medicine and research. In any commercial application the choice of a specific immobilized enzyme or mode of immobilization must be based on a specific compromise about all advantages and disadvantages between free and immobilized enzyme. Other industrial applications of immobilized enzymes include lab scale organic synthesis and analytical and medical applications. Furthermore, since enzymes are able to catalyze reactions not only in aqueous solutions but also in organic media, immobilized enzymes can catalyze organic synthesis also. So we, we have learnt about the immobilization methods. Now let us have a talk about the application of enzymes in different areas. Currently immobilized enzymes found applications in industry, medicine and research. In any commercial application, the choice of a specific immobilized enzyme or mode of immobilization must be based on a specific compromise about all advantages and disadvantages between free and immobilized enzyme. Other industrial applications of enzymes include lab scale organic synthesis, analytical and medical applications. Further, enzymes are also able to catalyze reactions not only in aqueous solutions but also in organic media. We can also catalyze organic synthesis also. Immobilized enzymes are used in biosensors and in diagnostic strips. Biosensors are constructed by integrating biologically 
sensing system example enzyme with a transducer. Enzymes for the most cases are immobilized either directly or a trans on a transducer's working tip or using a polymer membrane tightly wrapping it up. In principle, due to enzyme specificity and sensitivity, biosensors can be tailored for nearly any target analyte and these can be both enzyme substrate and enzyme inhibitors. Advantageously, the determination is performed without a special preparation of the sample. Detection of glucose in blood is the most commonly used biosensor. Some of the enzymes immobilized on various supports which are used as biosensors are shown in this slide. Industries is another sector where the immobilized enzymes are used. Depending upon their catalytic activity, some are used for production of antibiotics also. Most commonly used enzymes in food industry are trypsin, lecases, tyrosinases, pectinases and starch hydrolyzing enzymes. Here you can see the application of an immobilized enzyme to remove the lactose from milk. More recent addition to the application of an immobilized enzyme is in biodiesel production. Biodiesel is monoalkyl esters of long chain fatty acids. Biodiesel is produced through triglycerides with esterification of alcohol in the presence of the catalyst. The production of catalyst is a drawback of high energy requirements recovery of glycerol and side reaction which may affect the pollution. Hence the biological production of liquid fuel with lipases nowadays has a great consideration with a rapid improvement. Bioremediation is still the unexplored area where the potential of immobilized enzymes can be applied. For enzymes used are lipases, lacases and peroxidases. This slide shows the removal of phenolic compounds by an immobilized lacase. To summarize today's lecture, we can say that immobilization is one of the most promising technique to achieve a highly efficient and economically competent biotechnological processes. Enzyme based strategies are increasingly replacing conventional chemical methods in both labs and industries. However, commercialization of immobilized enzyme is still uh, at a lower pace because of their cost and storage problems. Research should be focused to overcome the current limitations related to immobilization techniques. To summarize today's lecture, we have learnt about enzyme immobilization, advantages and disadvantages of immobilized enzymes. We discussed the various kinds of insoluble supports used for the enzyme immobilization. The different methods or techniques used in the immobilization have also been discussed. The applications of immobilized enzymes with examples are also highlighted in this lecture. Thank you. This content is also available on UGC ePartshala website.